Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Rick from Excel Gorilla, and in this video, I will tell you everything you need to know about the if function in Power Query. So, stay tuned. So, I decided to record a video on the Power Query if function because when you just get started with Power Query, this is one of the things that might trouble you, and it's a very popular function to begin with. So things that you might bump into is differences between Excel. Uh, if you make any mistakes, perhaps the errors mean nothing to you. And also perhaps you just wanna see how you can make nested if statements, different combination. Well, I got you covered in this video. Okay, welcome back. So I made a small data set that we can work with. And the things it shows is an order number, the packages that we're working with. So it can be each a pair or a packet. And I also show the unit price and the, the quantity. Now we're gonna work with his statements to analyze a bit, if we can make different groupings, if we can make some additional information here. Um, but before we get started with that, to start writing our first if function, let's make a custom column. So I could go into the add column tab, click on custom column, and I could write something like if, I double click the column package, equals each, then return me the word each, and I'll also return me no. Now let's take a moment to analyze what the syntax is like. In Power Query, your if statement always starts with the word if in lowercase letters. Then the tested condition comes after the word if. So in this case, I'm testing whether the package is equal to the word each. After your condition, then depending on if the result is true or false, you're going to return a result. So in this case, the result when the condition is true will be repeated after the word then. So the next word we write here in blue is the word then. So when the result, the condition is true, we return the word each. And then if the result of the condition is false, we will return the word no. Let's make a short comparison with Microsoft Excel here. In Microsoft Excel, you would write something similar, but it would look like this. It would look like is if, then we would write the same package is each, you would write a comma, and then this would be returned if it was true, and no would be returned if it was false. So what are the differences with Microsoft Excel? The first difference is that the arguments in Power Query are separated with the words uh, if, then, and else, and in Microsoft Excel, they are separated with commas. First difference. The beginning and the end of the if function in Power Query are also denoted by the words then and else, whereas in Microsoft Excel, there's parentheses in the beginning and the end. So that's two. And the third and most important one, I think because a lot of people make these mistakes, is that Power Query is case sensitive. So the words are supposed to be written in lowercase because if you write any uppercase here, you're gonna get an error. So those are the main difference between Excel and Power Query. So let's see what happens if we press OK, so you can actually see the results. We press OK, and you will see in the formula bar on the top that a formula is added that says each, and then it adds our, um, our statement. And once you get to hang of the M code, you're gonna recognize what it's doing. So in this case, the each word denotes that it's gonna repeat this code on each of the rows in your table. But you can still recognize what code you wrote here. Now, this, these are the base, this is the basic syntax for an if function in Excel, uh, in Power Query. But this is not the easiest way to write it if you have very simple if functions. So what we're gonna do is we're also gonna have a look at how we can do this using the conditional column button. So there's two ways in which you can add a custom column in an e very easily. The first one we just did by adding custom column. The second one is done by clicking on conditional column in the add column tab. And when we click on this, you can first give it a name. So I could write here the, the each test. And what we'll do is we'll replicate the same formula. And what it does is, it's gonna first ask for your condition. So we're gonna have a selection of our column name, the column name package. If it equals the word each, then I want it to return each. And if this is not true, we can write null. 
Some advantages of writing it like this. We don't have to look at the, the double quotes between the text because Power Query will recognize that it's a word. Also, it's very quick to write. You don't make any mistakes. And yeah, these are most of the benefits. So you don't really have to write the formula from scratch. Now, if you press OK, you're going to find that the, the edit formula on the top here is exactly the same as what we just did. So if I click back on the other one, each if package each, then each else no. And this one does just the same. OK, so when you're working with very basic if statements, I would recommend using the add conditional column version. But very quickly, you will notice that this will not really fulfill your needs for more complex statements. For example, we just did a statement. So let's get back to the other one. And the test is now just looking at the column package. And what it does is it does all kinds of tests. There is a column with operators and it can do something like, does it equal? Is it bigger than? Is it smaller than? Those are the easy operations. But what if you would want a condition that tests on two different columns? You won't be able to do that. Also, what you'll find is that if the condition is true, then as a result, in the last time we returned like a, a value, a hard-coded value, which was text, you also have the option to select a column. So if the condition is true, you could also uh, return the value of the, the cell that's on the same row in the other column. So I could also say like, I'd want to return the package. And instead of just hard coding the each word, it's now just gonna return the word each that comes from the column package. So if I write okay, the if statement changes and it shows package. But this right away also shows a limitation that we have because when the condition is true, we can return a value, we can return a column, and the third one we could return is a parameter. We don't have one now, and that's why it's grayed out, but that's the another option. But let's say at some point you'd want to return a formula. You'd want to say like, if the condition is true, I want to return the value in a column multiplied by two. That's not possible at this moment. So to have more complex calculations, uh, more complex if statements, you actually need to resort to the custom form functions. Okay. Now, enough with all this theory. So these are the two ways in which you can add your, uh, your if statement. I'm gonna just show some examples that you could do. We're gonna add a new custom column. And the first test I'll do is with all the different operators that we have, operators. So I could do something like if the order number is bigger or equal than five, then return me the value one, else I want the value two returned. So you're seeing that one of the operators is bigger or equal to, and that works just fine. So changing this formula, you could either do it here and you're going to, oh, that's the first thing uh, that's maybe good to know. I just wrote this formula in the custom column box, but if it's easy enough to translate it to the conditional column pop-up, then Power Query does it automatically for you. So you could change it there, but if you're comfortable enough, you can also change your formulas on top here. So instead of bigger or equal to, I could also write smaller or equal to, that's also an operator. There's operators that says equal. So if it equals five, return me number one. You could return something like that's not equal. So that's the opposite. And then of course there's things like, uh, yeah, those are the basic, uh, the basic operators basically. Now in many instances, a single if statement is not enough. You could combine them and you end up with a nested if statement. So let's say we get back to uh, a custom formula. I want to return a column that tells me the quantity of each of the packages. One of our column tells us the quantity of the column packages that has been sold. But the each column means that there is a single product in the package. The pair shows that there's two products and the packet will tell us that there's four products sold in a package. So let's imagine we want to create a column that shows us how many units are sold. 
we could start out by saying like, okay, if, if my package equals each, then I want it to return the number one. Else, so normally we would now end our if statement. We could say, for example, no. If the package is each, then one, else no. But perhaps you need more statements. And to then continue, you could just, after the word else, you can just start another if statement. So we could continue if package equals pair, then I want to return the value two. Because if you sell a pair, there's two numbers. Else, no. And if we then press OK, we're going to find that for each of the lines with each, I'm going to show one, and the line that shows pair is going to show two. Now, this is not enough yet, because we also want a third statement. And as you can now see, it has been converted to the menu of the conditional statements. So let's just add the other clause there. There is a button here that lets you add another if statement. So if you press add clause, you can just press package. If it equals packet, then it's four. And otherwise, if that's not the case, if the value is null. And that's how you can do it. So to make it a little bit more clear of what that looks like, the formula in the formula box would start with if package is each, then one else. We're going to have another if statement, and then if that doesn't, uh, if that doesn't, condition doesn't return true, then we're going to have another if statement with no as an answer if n not any of those three actually are good enough. So that's how you can get started with nesting your if statements. Now, fair enough, that's fun, but how about if we want a bit more complex if statements? Perhaps you want to compare two different columns, or you have several conditions. Um, in this case, let's say your company will give you your customer a discount if they buy something, if they buy at least 20 products, and that those products are for a unit price of at least 200 euros. You can make an if statement for that. So we're going back to custom column. So if my quantity if the quantity sold is bigger or equal than um, I'm going a little bit too quick for this video I'm gonna cancel this one so the column that I just made actually means the quantity per package so before we can calculate the exact amounts that are sold, the exact quantity, it would be good to multiply that amount by the quantity here. So the quantity sold here has to be multiplied by the quantity per package. And we could do that by selecting this one and the other, add a column, standard, multiply. And the new column will be uh, units sold. And now we're going to return that question that I just posed. If we sell at least 20 products for at least 200 euros per product, then we want to give a discount to our client. So how do we do that? We can add a custom column. So if our unit sold is bigger or equal to 20, but now we want another condition here before it should return true. So we're going to have a look at the unit price and say that the unit price should at least be 200 and unit price is bigger or equal to 200 so this is our if condition now if this is true then i'm going to return the word discount and else return the world uh, the word no discount So I'm forgetting the word if in the beginning here, exactly. And just like this, we can call the column discount, question mark, and then we can press okay. Now to make it a bit easier, I could just space this to the next line. 
then discount, else no discount. So whereas with the if statements that we did before, we only checked for a single column, this one is now being checked on with multiple columns. Now, the first thing you might wonder is, does Power Query also translate this to the conditional column pop-up menu that we just looked at? And last time that happened automatically. So if we click on the wheel here, you're gonna see that we still have that custom column box because those options are not available in the conditional column box. That's why. Okay, so now we tried this with uh, the, the end operator with some end logic. But if we like, we could also do a test that says either the unit price needs to be bigger than 20 or the amount of units sold need to be bigger than 20 or the unit price needs to be more than 200. And just like the word and, we can also add something like the word or. And it's all in lowercase again. So if you replace the word and by or, and press OK. You're going to see that more, more of the columns do now qualify for the discount. So we've had the operator and an or, and there's another one missing, which is the word not. Sometimes it's easier to just specify the word not instead of having to rewrite everything. So in this case, if you're interested in the opposite, you could also write like if not. And for myself, I open the parenthesis. So I know that this expression should be negated. So if this is true, then it should not be true. And then if we press OK, everything will be reversed. And those are the easiest way to basically add and or or not. There's one that I forgot to talk about. And it's about the in uh, equivalent in Power Query. In many formula languages, they have the in equivalent to uh, the, the in function to basically check whether a column, uh, whether a list of values is available in a column. And that's not standard available with uh, the description in, but we have an equivalent in Power Query for that. So let's say um, we're going to start with a new formula. Let's say we want to know whether these numbers, uh, the order numbers in the beginning, uh, we need to know whether we're looking at the order three, five, or six, three, five, or six. So I'll call, the, call this uh, order three, five, or six. We can start our if statement. If order number is three or order number, let me just click, it's quicker, is four, uh, five, or order number equals six, then true, else false. So now we basically had to repeat our code all the time. And it's still manageable right now because we have three values. But let's imagine that you need six values or seven. So instead of having this, now somebody tells you like, no, I also need order nine and order number let's say eight and nine. Then you'd have to continue this and write is equal to eight or, oh, I need to write an or here as well, is equal to nine. And then again, your formula will work. But I'm gonna show you now a way that will replicate the in function in all other languages. So instead of just having to repeat all this code, we could also remove all this. And in our if statement, we could say, if list uh, contains, and now what is we're gonna do is we're gonna provide Power Query with a list, and it's gonna check whether the column that we're gonna compare is found, like the value in that column is found in the list we're providing. So I'm first gonna provide a list that starts with an, uh, uh, like a square bracket or a curly bracket. And then I go three comma five comma six comma eight comma nine, close the curly bracket. And then it's gonna compare in this column whether it finds any of those values or the other way around. It's gonna find try to find the value of order number in the list that we provide. So if it's true that the order number is found in this list, 
then it returns true, and otherwise it returns false. And just like that, you are actually able to replicate the in function in Power Query. So make use of that. Now, this is most that you need to know to work with Power Query's if statements. One thing I'd like to show still is that you can also return a formula. So let's say the, res the result would be false. You could say, I wanted to return the order number multiplied by two for whatever reason. And you're gonna see that you can even add a, a formula in the end. This was not possible in the conditional column um, menu, but right here is just fine. And with that, I think I can round up the example of statements. There's one topic I'd still like to delve into and is the errors that you can get. Because the errors in Power Query are not very clear, especially around the if statements. So let's see what kind of errors you could get. Earlier on, we had some basic if statements. So for example, uh, yeah, let's, let's start from scratch. Let's start from scratch. If I would want to write a custom column, I could write if package equals each, then one else two. So far in the bottom of the screen, you can see that it says no syntax errors have been detected. If I would now write a capital letter here, if, you're gonna find in the bottom that it says token E of expected. I up to today still don't know what that means. But just know that when this happens, it could be because you have capitalized part of your if statement. Now, this is all great, but if I would just add this as a, as a custom column here to say like error, okay, I'm gonna call this error. So we try to, uh, I first showed you the error in the custom column box, but let's say I would change this word if to capital letters up here. So instead of in the custom column box, I'm doing it in the formula bar. We can press enter. And now all of a sudden, we don't find the E of expected, but we get the result saying expression syntax error, token comma expected. So it's suggesting to us, first of all, that the syntax isn't good. Okay, fair enough. But then it's telling us that it's expecting a comma somewhere. And this simply is not the, right, the reason why we have an error. Because the biggest error here is that we want to write an if statement. So, so those are two errors that you can bump into. Let's have a look at the third error. So let's say we have a formula and we write each if package uh, equals each, then we do this. But perhaps at some point you actually wanted to write an end statement or an or. So I could write the word end. And if I then press enter, you're gonna get another error, which isn't very clear. So it now says expression error uh, expression syntax error, token literal expected. And the only reason why we have this is because we added the word end here. So that's another reason why your if statement could get an error. Okay, so we get it back working now. Mm, then there's something else going on. If I were to take away the word then, I could write enter. Uh, I could press enter and you're going to get a syntax error saying the token then was expected. And this error is fairly clear. So now I know that the word then should be here fixed. And the same happens if you take away the word else. Because basically it's telling like, if I have an if function, I need to have the word if, the word then and else. And in this case, else is missing. So it's telling us the token else is expected. Okay, that's all for now. So that was the whole session. Thanks for sticking along, it was quite the ride. And um, if this provided any value to you, I'd love to get this big thumbs up, it's gonna help. Uh, if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe to get similar kind of videos. I record things like almost every two weeks. Um, as you can see, as you might see, I've been working on my YouTube studio with the lighting, so any feedback on that is welcome. And other discussions, you know where you can do it down in the comments. I hope to see you next time and thanks for joining me.